Hello, my name is Nana, and I'm a developer advocate at Unleash. Today I'm going to walk you through how to implement feature flags in a Java Spring Boot application. Um, we are going to be using the Spring Pet Clinic sample application, widely known and used by Java developers and Spring, Spring Boot enthusiasts. And um, yeah, we're going to create um, a Java interface and a service implementation, two of them, and toggle between them using a feature flag. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first step to getting started with Unleash and using our Spring application is we'll need to clone the Unleash repo. I already have it cloned onto my local machine, but you would use git clone and the Unleash um, link. And the big thing here is that I'm using the code from the documentation for the Spring Boot tutorial that is all in our docs. So you can follow along and um, copy and paste the code and get, get up and running even faster. Um, so I already have my Unleash repo and I'm inside of it already and I'm going to run it and use Docker with docker compose up dash D and get the container started. Now that that is up and running, we'll go to the browser and to localhost 4242. And we have our local Unleash instance running and we'll sign in with our username and password. The username is admin and the password is unleash for all with the number four. Okay, now we are inside um, the Unleash platform and the next thing we'll do is create our feature flag that we'll use in our application. I'm gonna name this feature flag the products page flag. And just to give you a quick rundown, uh, we're creating this flag for a new products page, a new view that we want to create within the Spring Pet Clinic app. Uh, what will be used for that page are two different uh, Spring Beans, two different service implementations that we'll be able to toggle between and verify that with Unleash and within our code. But first things first, we create the flag and then click Create Feature Toggle. Great, now that we have that, we'll go ahead and enable this in the development environment, which means that we're turning this flag on. Once we configure everything Unleash related in the Pet Clinic app, um, we'll be able to start using this feature flag. And the next thing we'll need for configuring Unleash in the app is to create an API token. To do that, we go over to settings within Unleash and click API access and then click new API token. I'm gonna name this the Spring App token. This will be server side since we're dealing with Java and uh, Spring on top of it, and then create token. We'll use this token next to be able to plug into our configuration. Um, now that we've got our token created, let's go over to the Spring Pet Clinic app and let's build it, run it, and add our uh, Unleash dependencies. So what you'll use is um, the git clone command. You're here in your terminal window. You'll use something like this, git clone, and it's the Spring uh, Pet Clinic app. I already have it, so I'm going to cd right into it. And then we'll run an Apache Maven command to build the Java source code and run the application. So this is the command I'll be using. This is the package command. So you could either do this and run a java-jar target command, or you can use the Spring Boot run, which is a Spring Boot Maven plugin um, to get all of this up and running. Alternatively, you can use Gradle as opposed to Maven to build and run the project, but I already have Maven set up with this, so that's what I'm going to use. And now that this has been built, I'm going to run the Maven W Spring Boot Run command. make sure that y'all can see that. This was the command right here.
and this looks good. The app should be accessible at localhost 8080. We're going to verify that this is up and running. And this is the Spring Pet Clinic app. So we've got a cute little welcome view here, and we have our main navigation where you can find owners, um, owners of pets, the veterinarians that are associated with the clinic, and an example errors page. So everything looks good here. The next step will be to add an Unleash Spring Boot Starter to our project dependencies. In uh, most cases, in a Java-based application, uh, we have our dependencies in the palm.xml file. So if I go to that file here, I should be able to inject the Unleash Spring Boot Starter to, uh, into our existing dependencies. I'm going to do that on line 71. We have our Spring and Spring Boot dependencies um, commented, this dependencies section here. So I will um, add that to this on line 71. And this is version 1.1.0. Next thing we'll do is add the Unleash configuration into the application properties file. Sometimes this can be a YAML file, but in this case, it's a .properties file for our Spring Boot app. We've got a list of properties that are Unleash specific that I'm adding to the bottom of this file. Like I said, this is all um, being copy and pasted from our documentation because I've already run through this and I've gotten everything configured for everyone to use. And um, here is some of the info from uh, that's Unleash specific. We've got the app name, the instance ID, the environment, which is the development environment, our API URL, which is localhost 4242 forward slash API, and our API token that we generated in our uh, locally in Unleash. I'm going back to the platform where our spring app token was created, and I'm copying that token. So I'll get rid of this API key placeholder and pasting the key right here. So now that we've got our configuration in our application properties file, we can start creating our spring beans. Um, there is a, a lot of code that we'll be using here, so just um, pay closely attention. There are layers to how we construct this new products page and um, how we create the two service implementations that we'll be toggling between. The first thing we need to do is to create the interface, the Java interface that these two service implementations will be using. And that is called our pet products service. Most of these files will be created in the owner's directory. Actually, not this one. This owner directory right here. Just to simplify things, we don't have to create a new directory um, uh, for all of the code that we'll be adding. But we'll be adding this uh, code snippet in a file called pet products service Java. Make sure that is capitalized correctly. And this is where we'll add in our interface. So this is pretty simple, very straightforward. It's an interface where we are using an Unleash feature, Unleash annotations called context path and toggle. Uh, this is just written differently than how you might see in other applications that are using our SDKs um, that are client side and server side. Uh, this is a very Spring Boot specific, a very Spring specific um, annotation and it essentially means the same thing as in that you'll see in other apps, which is we are checking if the products page flag is enabled. And if it is, we want to utilize a very specific bean. We want to serve the pet prescription service implementation bean. If the flag is off, 
we'll be using a totally different service implementation. Um, but we haven't created either of those yet. We only have the interface and it has a general uh, basic um, method that can be called and we'll also need to add those to the two services um, and just override them. Um, but first, let's create the pet product service implementation and then we'll create the prescription one that will be uh, extended or utilized based off of this interface. And that is a file that we'll call the pet products service infl dot java and we'll add this code. So we've named the service pet product service implementation and like I said overriding the existing um, function that's in the interface. And we're also logging that this is the particular service that we're using and this will just help us um, get an idea of okay we are actually pointing pointing to the to the correct bean the correct file that we intended to in the case that the uh, flag that we just created is off and the next service that we'll create is the pet prescription uh, service implementation we'll create that right now pet prescription service simple.java using the code snippet for this service. Here we go. And this is the service, like I said, implementing the same interface, um, but is a different service called pet prescription. So pretty much the same thing. It's just the, um, what we're logging is slightly different. And um, so this is the service that will be called when the flag is on. And we'll need to be able to verify that, but we'll get to that in a little bit. So we've got our interface. We have our two serv service implementation files. What's next? Now we need a REST API controller for the endpoint that will serve the products view that we're wanting to create. That controller and with the endpoint will point to an HTML file that we'll build after that. So to create the pet products controller, let's go back over to our owner directory and create pet products controller dot java. In this file, we have this code. So we have our class, the pet products controller. This is using the interface we created and we have we're using get mapping annotation from the Spring framework to create the products endpoint. Within this products endpoint, we are adding the pet products page attribute and returning the uh, which would be data that we would want to have or use for this page, especially if we were going to make this into a fully functioning like products page for the app. Um, but we are uh, simply returning the products um, HTML file. And that's the next thing that we'll create um, in order to serve this new page pointing to this endpoint. So to create that, we'll go to resources, I'm going to go to a different uh, directory. We'll go to resources and inside templates, create a new file called products.html. in Spring, as some of you might know, that it has a little bit of magic going on. And this is something that I learned along the way, is that when you return products, um, it knows automatically to find uh, an HTML file or something like it that will be named the same thing, products.html. And so that's what we're doing. And we're using this pretty small code snippet that will simply render uh, like a basic um, page and it's using Timeleaf, the templating engine. And um, we've got our H2 heading clinic products and the pet products page text, which um, should be uh, the text that we have in our service implementation files. Um, and so that's logged here and here. But 
here is our products.html file. So we've got the page, um, we've got what we want on the page. We need to be able to easily get there. And one of the ways to do that is to add this um, as a link in our navigation that you saw at the top of this page here. So where we're able to click on the veterinarians, finding owners, the home page, we'll add in a clinic products um, page that will uh, render um, the file that we just created. So to modify our navigation menu, we'll go to layout.html. And in this section, this is where we have our nav items. Home, find owners, veterinarians, error, and we'll inject the clinic products page on line 62. This would be a good section to do it. Cool. And with Timeleaf, this is the syntax, syntax that's being um, utilized. The products endpoint and um, recognizing that it is the products.html file that we're pointing to, that we have the meta description or the meta title and the actual title that you'll see on the page. Now it's time to check if the if we can update everything. Now that we've updated the code, we want to see that updated in the browser. So we'll probably need to kill our app in the terminal and then restart it. But this should be all of the code that we need to get the products page up and running and then begin toggling the feature flag. So back to the terminal window where our Spring Pet Clinic app is running. I'm going to control C and then run the Spring Boot command again. And now we've got an error. Okay, so this is a formatting violation for some of the files that, almost all of the files that we just created. Um, so this is a pretty strict app. We need to make sure that our formatting is correct or we're going to run into issues. Um, and they are providing uh, the command for that. I'm going to put a dot forward slash NVNW, right? Yep, for Maven, um, executable command in front of this command, spring dash Java format colon apply. So this should handle all of the formatting and looks like the build is successful. And I'm going to rerun the spring boot command. Hopefully we don't run into any um, issues after that, but we'll double check in the browser and here in the terminal. Okay, let's go back over to the browser and I'll refresh. Okay, and now we see we've got the navigation has been updated and our clinic products page is showing. This is great. And also in the text that we set up within our service implementation, the pet prescription service that particular spring bean is the one that is showing up in the browser. That is the one that the app is pointing to, which would indicate that our feature flag is on, it's working. And we also see that in the terminal here with the uh, system.print um, outline that we uh, wrote in our code. So we're triggering the pet prescription service and we can see the clinics page, the clinic products page is working. Now that we know the flag is on, it's connected and hooked up to the products page, we can verify that when we turn the flag off, that we will default to the other service, which is the general um, pet product service that we created. And in order to do that, we'll need to go back to Unleash, go to our feature toggles, find the products page flag, and then simply turn it off in the development environment. This might take a few seconds for uh, the Unleash client to pick up on, but I'll try refreshing it now. And after that refresh, 
I just saw that this text changed to the general pet product service implementation when before it was the prescription service. If we go to our terminal, we see that it's logging a different message and that is from the other, uh, the first service implementation that we created, the pet product service. So you can see this here, this is the one that is now showing and in this file, this was the service that was showing when the flag was on. So we've just verified that our flag is working. We connected Unleashed Client to the Pet Clinic app, and we were able to toggle between the two spring beans. And you know, in a real world case, be able to build out an entire products page. Maybe you have an original one and you want to transition to a different type or a different user experience, different services um, that are connected to it with data. Um, you'll be able to do all of that and actually roll it out using the Unleashed platform and using the feature flag or flags that you are creating. And that is the end of our tutorial. Thank you so much for watching. Like I said, my name is Nana, Dev Advocate at Unleash, and I'll see y'all next time.